This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. Today we're gonna to be diving into vision calibration. Now what the heck does that mean? Almost every single pick and place has usually about two cameras on it. One is mounted to some kind of base and it points upwards, and then another one is mounted to a head or some kind of moving end effector and it points downwards. These cameras can be used for a ton of things in a pick and place, but mainly what they're used for is figuring out exactly where things are in space so that the picking and the placing process is super, super accurate. You can just technically put in the position of all the different footprints on the board manually or import a position file and just assume that everything is exactly where the machine thinks it is and there's no slop or backlash or anything like that. A pick and place is handling a bunch of little bits of tolerance stack up all over the place in the feeder, in the board placement, in all the actual axes of moving a head around. And a way that you can get around having all of these tolerance stack ups is to have a camera be able to check exactly where things are and calibrate out some of that tolerance so you can still get really, really precise placement. I particularly am leaning pretty heavily on this because my machine does not cost very much money in comparison to the big fancy ones with all the big linear rails and linear motors and stuff like that. So using vision to calibrate out all the things that aren't maybe that precise about this machine is gonna be really helpful for getting it to work much better. So how the heck are we gonna do this on the index? Well, first off, there are a few different kind of vision calibrations that can happen in a pick and place. You can calibrate out any kind of weird deflection in the lens itself. Every lens has some kind of distortion or fisheye or some effect in it that means that the output is not a directly one-to-one -one linear mapping scale of exactly what it sees. So there are ways that you can calibrate out any warping that you get in your lens to make the image that comes in that you're doing all your processing on super flat. You can use vision to find the fiducials on a panel and that will tell the machine exactly where the panel is in space and it will offset all the position file coordinates by where exactly it sees the panel to be so everything is super, super precise. You can also calibrate out the exact position of the component on the nozzle. If you pick up a really big part like a, a TQFP100 or something like that, the nozzle may pick it up maybe not perfectly centered on the part or maybe it skitters around a little bit as the vacuum turns on and it pulls it up or it may not be exactly perfect. There's also I think like three or five degrees of allowable rotation of the component inside the component tape so you don't even really know exactly how it's being served up to you from the feeder. A way that you can make sure that your placement is chef's kiss is to then take that part, bring it over the upward facing camera and take a look at it. And if you tune some computer vision stuff right, you can see if it's offset and not perfectly centered and also what rotation it needs to be moved to. So what we're gonna do today is figure out how much of a difference this makes and add in vision calibration for some components so we can see how much better it gets once the machine knows exactly where the part is on the nozzle. Mmm. Woo! It's gonna be good. And of course, with all good experiments, we need a control test. So I went ahead and populated two different kinds of components on a glow tie board that I have right here. And I did not use any vision system at all in order to set this up. Well, that's not entirely true. I used a built-in tool that OpenPMP has that lets you figure out kind of where the board is in space without fiducials. Effectively, you just pick a couple different footprints on the board and OpenPMP will try and move the camera over it. You adjust it very slightly to center it and then it can kind of figure it out from there based on a few different component placements where the board is in space. It's effectively a fiducial calibration, but you're kind of doing it by hand. Anyway, we're gonna use this as our control test to see after we get vision going, does it get better than this? And let me tell you, I hope it does, cause this is messy. All right, let's take a look at this hot garbage. Okay, so yeah, not too great. To be fair, one of these I bumped a little bit and is not accurate to how it was placed, but the rest are pretty darn accurate to where the nozzle actually put them down. So some broad observations here. Aside from a few of the NeoPixels, the rotation usually seems like it's pretty good. There are a few that aren't aligned perfectly in terms of rotation, but they could still definitely stand to be calibrated. <laughs> the main problem is a transformation offset. This is even more noticeable with the 0805 resistors because it's almost completely off of the footprint because they're so small. This is probably a combination of one, the nozzle probably not picking the part up in exactly the center of the part, which means that when it rotates, you also get a bit of a translation. And two, also because it's not picking up in the center, it just is putting it in completely the wrong place to begin with, never mind another extra offset from rotating the part. Either way, we will be calibrating out both rotation and translation, so both of these problems should be fixed with a little bit of vision. And we're gonna get precise.
Okay, what the heck was that? That whole procedure was calibrating the lens. This is a procedure that OpenPMP has baked into it, and as you can see by applying and unapplying the calibration, it completely removes all the fisheye and just maps everything out super linearly. The way that you do it is with this grid pattern, which is what OpenPMP is actually looking for. It knows exactly what the spacing between those circles is supposed to be, and so it can kind of back out what the lens is actually doing to the image if it knows how it should look when it's all mapped perfectly scaled. So all I did was print it out and put it underneath the camera and OpenPMP automatically finds all the circles and does the calibration. I feel like this calibration would really be super significant for larger parts where you really need the outsides where the fisheye is gonna be more to be super XY scaled perfectly. But for a tiny part, I would imagine it would affect it a little bit less. Either way, it's super cool and it works really, really well. That is so cool. What the f <laughs> One down, two to go. Next up is fiducial calibration. For those of you who don't know, a fiducial is a tiny little spot on a board that a pick and place uses for exactly this calibration step. When you import the position file from a board or a panel, it has the positions of every single footprint on some kind of Cartesian grid along with the fiducials. When a pick and place downwards camera finds two, three, or sometimes way more than that number of fiducials on the panel, it will figure out if I saw this fiducial here and this fiducial here, at this position, and then this one here and this one here at those positions, how do I transform the entire grid of positions to match up where the board actually is in space? It does like a matrix transformation squish to get all the positions it has in its head from the position file to match up with reality. It's so cool that this is just a built-in thing and, ah, oh, it's so cool, it's so sick. The panel that I have here has fiducials along the rail, which coincidentally is something that a lot of you told me that I should change about the conveyor belt to keep the top of the rail open because a lot of people like putting their fiducials on the rail, so it's a good thing we made that change. There are also a few fiducials on the board, which are the ones that I'm gonna be using to try and figure out exactly where everything is for this grid. Unfortunately, the glow tie boards that I have don't have fiducials, so I can't actually do that for the glow tie, but this will be a good way to make sure that it's all working properly. And just like that, I have fiducial calibration built in. Just like the last calibration, OpenPMP makes this so easy to do. All I did was pop in and add the position of the fiducials, which is even easier to do than typing in the numbers because you can just jog the head to it and click a little button that captures the current camera position. And then once you've captured it, it knows exactly where it is and it knows where to check. The thing with the most variation in this process is the vision pipeline for detecting where the fiducial is and trying to suss that out just based on a picture. The default settings for this is really good in OpenPMP and it just about worked for me just out of the box without changing any settings. But with a little bit of tuning, it's working great. <laughs> It'll hop around a couple times just to make sure it's really getting the most precise position that it can. Then it moves the head out of the way and updates all the positions based on the fiducials. And even then the tuning that I had to do for the vision pipeline wasn't really that bad. It's so cool the way that you can do it. I really like the way that it's implemented. You just have to pop into the fiducial locator section and hit edit pipeline. And then you get this really cool UI that shows you all the different steps that OpenCV is doing to process the image to try and figure out a location of the fiducial. It actually first starts by generating a mask of what it expects the footprint to look like. In our case, the fiducial is just a one millimeter diameter circle, so it just generates a little circle, and it tries to match that circle up with anything it can find in the image that looks like that. Then it goes through and does some blurring and some image processing and stuff, and then it does the comparison to see what looks the most like this little circle, and then it takes that position. There are some configuration parameters underneath the kind of chain of all the different processes that happen, so you can tweak those if you need to, or even add in whole other steps if that's something that you feel like is necessary for whatever you're trying to do with it. And that's it, it automatically updates from there. All right, the third and final calibration that we're gonna do today is bottom vision. This is for the camera that's pointing upwards that can look at the bottom of a part while it's attached to the nozzle. This is gonna be the one that I think is gonna do the most for getting super, super accurate placement. The process for tuning the vision stuff is exactly the same as it was for the fiducial calibration, it's just using a different 
different input, not a little circle that it's trying to match up with, but whatever footprint you have for your component. And this calibration does two different corrections. It's trying to center the part and orient it correctly. So you're getting rotation and translation. And then it uses that new position that it knows the part is reference to the nozzle to place it on the board. I'm really excited to see how the vision figures out rotation of a part. How do you find the orientation of a thing like that? I have no idea. So we're gonna pop into that vision pipeline and see if we can get that going with 0805 resistors. It works. It works. My excitement is only outweighed by my relief. <laughs> Tuning the bottom vision pipeline was way more laborious than the other two steps were. Trying to get the lighting really, really good and making sure that all the different steps in the open CV pipeline isolate the part, not only like actually getting the outline of it, but the orientation correct as well. That was pretty tricky. But after you use all of OpenPMP's little offset wizards and it knows where everything is on the machine, you can get some really, really good placement. All the 0805s are just dead on. And so are the WS2812s. I only ended up placing three of the NeoPixels because my passive feeder for some reason is just like, it's not able to pick them out of it for some reason, some suction thing. I don't know why. And my NeoPixel feeder is in a whole bunch of pieces, so. I got three, <laughs> but it gets the point across. It shows that the vision pipeline works and it's placing them so well. It goes to show that if your relative positioning is really good and you can use vision to calibrate, even with a $400 machine, you can get some accurate placements. Oh, <laughs> this feels so good. It feels so good. And if you look at the before and after, I mean, Holy smokes. Dead Reckoning is just not good enough when you have all the variation in a feeder, the parts rotating around and skittering across the end of the tip and all the tolerance stack up just results in a bad placement. Yeah, that's just awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so now that I've taken a pass at all the vision calibration, what is next for making sure that we get really accurate placement with this machine? The biggest thing is coming up with a test board that validates whether or not this is doing what it was setting out to do. This will include having a whole bunch of different footprints on it. It'll have fiducials for the fiducial calibration. Plus it'll have some built-in stuff that will help this whole process happen, this whole vision calibration procedure. Printing out all the little test panels and using all the little wizards worked pretty well, but it'd be really nice to have a board that just kind of has all the calibration stuff built into it. OpenPMP actually already has one of these and it's really cool. So I'm gonna be basing it quite a bit off that, just tuned so that the parts on there are for specifically testing the capabilities of this machine and what we're setting out to accomplish with the index specifically. Then after we have a metric that we can definitively say, yes, the machine is accomplishing what it's setting out to do, then we can start running some lifetime and validation tests. So sure, it's sitting here working on my bench and it's placing parts pretty darn accurately with this vision pipeline, but until I can get a whole bunch of these things all cranking through some kind of test board that validates that it's doing what it's supposed to, it's not finished. A one-off test does not at all mean validation. It just means that it works right now and there's still a lot of testing left to do, but it's gonna be good. This is a freaking awesome, awesome step forward. There's also a few changes that are just generally going to help with the validation testing and making it more likely that they'll pass. Among these is making it easier to tension all of the axis belts. Right now, you just kind of have to muscle them tight, which does kind of work if you don't mind it being a pain in the butt, but it's much less likely that you're gonna get really good tension on them. So a few CAD changes are coming down the line that's gonna make that a lot better. A whole bunch of other little things that are gonna make this proof of concept, all of the multitude of things that went into this test just now, 
make it more reliable. All right, that's it for this one. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like The Index, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before we go, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay has been making the boards for this project and they have all come out absolutely gorgeous. I am particularly partial to their matte black gold finish, which is what I use for the Rev2 motherboards. But if I need boards in a pinch, their green solder mask comes so fast, like unbelievably quickly from the time that you place your order to the time that the boards are at your front door in your hands. It's crazy that they're able to do a custom design that fast. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Heck yeah.